Yes. Right. That was beautiful. Right, thank and you. And you know, that's a perfect transition into the topic we're talking today about today on the political segment, protest in Nigeria. Um, when he was reciting that poem, the first thing that came to my mind was the Chibok girls, then the Dachi girls, and all the young girls who have been abducted for so many years, and most of them we don't even you know, have them today. So the discussion today is protests in Nigeria, as I said. Protests have been happening in different parts of the country. They are usually organized by civil society groups or people with a common goal who have decided to demand their rights from the government through a demonstration. Joining us to discuss this topic today, we have... We have with us in the studio a lawyer, a, a historian, two-time minister, a former special advisor to the president, and an activist, Chief Femi Fanny Kaede. Welcome to the Weekend Thank Show, Thank you sir. very much. <laughs> yeah, most welcome. So when we see protests like Bring Back Our Girls or Bring Back the Dapchi Girls, the government, yes, was irritated about protests like that at the time, but they didn't ban it. They knew it was the fundamental right of every mm. citizen to protest. Uh, but when we see protests now, like the Islamic movement of Nigeria and revolution now, the government is saying this sort of differs from protests like that. This is calling for an overhaul of the government, IPOB, they are looking to, uh, the government is looking to prescribe groups like this because they are calling for an overhaul of the government and they are not gathering for the betterment of the people. What is your response to that? Well, first of all, y you have to understand the nature of the government we're dealing with. Um, they don't mind people gathering at Unity Fountain to protest about Chibok girls because they feel that that really is no threat to their position and um, that is not something they need to worry too much about. When people talk about Dapchi girls, the same thing. It's distant, it's far from them, they're disconnected. It really doesn't matter to them. The problem they have is when people start to protest about their performance in government and um, what they are not doing, which they're supposed to be doing. Um, and what they fail to appreciate is that protest, uh, demonstration, and dissent um, is a fundamental aspect of any democratic setting. It's the soul of democracy. It's the strength of democracy. The fact that you can go out and you can say, I don't like what my government is doing. I will criticize the government. I will walk in the streets. I will march in the streets. And I'll carry my placard and I'll say no. That is democracy for you. And it happens everywhere else in the world. But here in Nigeria, we have a very peculiar uh, version of democracy, a very peculiar government that frowns on that that says you're not allowed to express yourself. And the minute you begin to express yourself and say the sort of things they don't like, they will prescribe you and describe you as a terrorist, and they will begin to lock you up and harass you, possibly charge you with treason and things like that, because they feel threatened by ideas and by communication, by protest and by democracy. And that's why many of us feel, and we have felt right from the start, and said it over the last four years, that this is precisely what would manifest under a Buhari presidency. These people are not Democrats. These people are dictators. They cannot fathom the whole idea of dissent and they cannot tolerate it. It's been done to IPOB, in my view, completely legally. It's been done to IMN, illegally. It's been done to the Otoge movement in Lagos, in, in, in the southwestern region of Nigeria, illegally. It's been done to the Revolution Now group, illegally. And it'll continue to be like that because this is a government that is weak, it is paranoid, they feel threatened by dissent and by opposition. And it's been done, let me just end with this, yeah. and a lot of people forget this. This has been done for the last four years to the official opposition, of which many of our members are still in detention, including Dasuki, against court orders and so on and so forth. But because we are just politicians, nobody seems to care about that. Forgetting that you need politicians to merge with activists, to merge with people in the civil society groups, to challenge any government that manifests dictatorial um, tendencies like this one. But um, if you look through our history, the last major protest which we had in Nigeria was in 2012, where they were the occupied Nigeria against fuel subsidy, right. and it was large scale, it was nationwide. Absolutely. Now, you come to modern times, mm -hmm. it is the duty of the government to protect yeah. lives and property. Yes. The fact also stands that with IMN, and with Revolution Now, there has been an element of crime or wrongdoing on the part of some of the organizers or participants. So with IMN, for instance, we've seen videos of cars being destroyed. We've okay. seen um, people being shot. We don't know if it's from the police or from them. Mm. Also with Revolution Now, a video or pictures of um, 
the, 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 the convener, Yellow Showery, defacing public property, doesn't this take away the right of them as being peaceful protesters to now almost rioting? Let's, let, let, let me explain this, and this needs to be because you've stated the case that the government or dictators always state that, look, we are you know, charged by law to ensure that there is order, people do not indulge in violence, people do not involve, you know, involve themselves in criminal activities. And I, for one, would never advocate violence. I don't believe in violence, unless, of course, it's self-defense. I don't believe in violence, and I would never tolerate it or accept it. I've been in government many, many years ago, and I know that it's the government's duty to ensure that there is no violence, there is no threat to the peace, there are no criminal activities, and there's no threat to the government in terms of insurrection and so on and so forth. Nobody is talking about that. Nobody is defending that. However, where you have a situation where people go out on a legitimate demonstration, and a few of them misbehave, or a few of them feel that maybe the police has shot live bullets at them and get angry and burn a few cars. Not right, criminal, and it is wrong. You don't get up and say that that whole organization is prescribed, which is what happened in the case of IMN. In the case of IPOB, it's even worse. You killed thousands of them over the last four years. And we mustn't forget this. You see, pre uh, blood is precious. You killed them over the last four years. We all know this. Nigerians don't like to talk about it. Forgetting that it's IPOB today, it could be you tomorrow, God forbid. It could be any of us tomorrow. But the truth is that they were killed over the last uh, four years. Their leader was charged with treason and dumped in jail uh, uh, and treated in a horrendous manner. And, 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 and that has been the habit of this government for any group that they are not comfortable with. Now, what did they do? They said they want to exercise their right of self-determination. They want a referendum about whether or not they'll be part of Nigeria and they're part of the country. That is a legitimate aspiration in a democratic setting. People may not agree with them. I mean, the bottom line in the democracy is this. You are entitled to speak whatever you like, say whatever you like. Even if I believe that my local government area in Ileife should break off from Nigeria, I should be able to say so uh, without any fear of being arrested. That is democracy. And, 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 and let me end with this. Go all over the world. Today, go to Hong Kong. For two months. You know, <laughs> go to Hong Kong. See what is happening. Hong Kong is part of communist China one of the most repressive reactionary governments in the world. And yet, because of the two-system policy they have there, look at what's happening in Hong Kong. They went, they took over the whole airport for the last few days. They've been protesting. The governor of Hong Kong had to withdraw the legislation they complained about. They said it's not enough. The governor must resign. And there they are expressing themselves, indulging in what I call a pure form of democracy. Not just Hong Kong. Go to Tunisia. Go to see what happened in Tunisia, see what happened in Libya, see what's happening in Sudan, see what happened in Iraq before things changed. This is a legitimate protest. These are legitimate, and it has happened everywhere else in the world, America, the United Kingdom, Western Europe, throughout the world. That is how democracies are developed. You bow to the will of the people. You listen to the people when they march in the streets, and you, and you talk to them. You don't lock them up. You don't charge them with treason. You don't lock them up for 45 days and say they have no right to dissent. Well, uh, yes. But where do we draw the line? Because yeah. you, just, you just said something very key. You mm. said that we have the right mm. to say whatever it is mm -hmm. we want. Mm. I disagree with mm -hmm. you. I believe that there are certain things that as citizens of this nation, we shouldn't utter. Like what? And I believe that, so calling for the segregation of the country, yes, um, yes is a fundamental yes. human rights. The, P, the um, IPOP group, the IMN, yes. yes, they can call that they want yes. their referendum. The yes. Afeniferi group has also called for right. that. However, when you start to preach violence no, against... No, 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 no. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I made that point very clear. Yeah. Violence or the expression of violence is not acceptable. I do not subscribe to that. In my view, as far as I'm aware, IPOP has never said, let us pick up guns and secede. Now, and that's the distinction. Outside of that, mm. you have the right in a democratic setting to say anything you like about your government. They work for us. But to say, I will kill, I will use arms, I will you know, indulge in insurrection, that is a different but thing. That's word, a criminal offense. But you agree words matter. Yes. So when IPOP refers, or some of the people yes. who believe, who are part of the yes. um, IPOP movement, mm -hmm. refer to Nigeria as a zoo, mm -hmm. 
Let's look at the pre-genocidal time in Rwanda when the <laughs> Hutus were referring to the Tutsis as, yes. co as cockroaches. Right. When it was time to kill them, it became so much easier because they saw look. them as cockroaches. So when they make remarks like no, this, no, no, you see, so you when see, they make, you see, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you, let, uh, let me finish. Let me yeah. let me finish. What? When they make remarks yes. like this, that Nigeria is a zoo, mm. that our leaders are animals, that Nigerians mm. are not human beings, don't you believe that they should be able to guide it's their very, utterances? It's very, very, very important for you to appreciate this fact, and I'll tell you this just once, okay? And I'm not justifying those expressions. I am a Nigerian. I do not believe that Nigeria is a zoo, and neither do I agree with that kind of language to be spoken about my people. But I also recognize the fact that people that have been hurt, wounded, marginalized, killed, slaughtered like flies, have had their children butchered before their very eyes, and so on and so forth, are bound to indulge in that sort of language. You go to, the, and I know you, you know the UK very well, go to any country in Western Europe or in America, listen to the way that some people that feel aggrieved refer to their governments. They say all sorts of things. It's a package. It's what you call free speech. Now, what you mustn't tolerate or accept is the idea of transiting from that, transiting from that to violence and say, I am getting up to you know, lead an armed insurrection or so. That's where you draw the line. But you do see the correlation. I, I, no, 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 I it don't. It starts from I, I, speech before no, 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 I don't, I, don't, I don't see the correlation, and I'll tell you why. Okay. You see, we, we are so used to this all-powerful state. And, I, I, you know, I have been in government. I know, and you are a product, I'm sorry to say this, <laughs> of the system as well. We all are. Many of us are. But the problem is this, that Nigerian governments are always very nervous when people get up and say what they want to say and they begin to act in an irrational way. Now, let me put this to you. What has happened in this country is that there's been abuse of power. And it's not just the Buhari government. It has happened over a period of time. And, you know, I, I, I'm in the, AP, the PDP, and um, the PDP was in power for 16 years. Throughout that period, on occasions, there were abuses of power. And what you need to do is understand that that is unacceptable. To say because I am in, had a few demonstrations because you abuse power by locking up their leader against court orders, and you expect them to sit at home and not demonstrate at all, you're joking. It doesn't work like that. To say but. that <laughs> IPOP doesn't have the right to exist, you're joking. And then you look at the processes that they adopt. That is also an abuse of power. You go to court as a government, and you say, I don't like uh, Osasu's show, and I don't like her face, or I don't like AIT, and it's happened to AIT too. You go to court. And you go and get a court order ex parte without the other side defending themselves, saying that I want this, I want this organization prescribed. And the court says, well, it looks as if you may have a point. We prescribe. You are prescribed until you now go to the Supreme Court and get it reversed. That is an abuse of power. You know why? Because AIT or Sasu or whoever it is has really done nothing wrong. They just don't like your face and they don't like what you're but, saying. But, but besides liking the face, besides the abuse of power, yeah. also as a lawyer, this book, which we call the Constitution, mm -hmm. Section 2, which talks about federalism, has said Nigeria is an indivisible and in dissolvable entity yes. with the United States forcing federalism mm. on the people. And so one of the major problems which we've had is the duplicity of laws where you have the Constitution, which gives you freedom of association yes. and movement, but you also have the Terrorism Prevention Act, yes, where what this automatically does is it removes the blame from government by saying it's abuse of power if the constitution empowers them and so regardless of what the protests and demonstrations mm -hmm. which we have don't you think that the fundamental problem comes with our constitutions and no. the national assembly not being able no, to I, modify this thing no no i don't I, I i disagree with you i don't think so at all the constitution is supreme there are rights that are fundamental there, the, the state also has a right to protect all of us from terrorists so they also need that power and i'm not for one moment suggesting that the state should not use its power when and if necessary but let me put this to you you do all you've done to imn you and their leader and his wife you do all you've done to ipop and their leader and his family you've, do, you've done all that why is it that you you don't apply this massive power that you have to fulani herdsmen or you don't apply it to other organizations that are involved in armed struggle, that are killing Nigerians, that are butchering us morning, day, and night. And I need to, I, you know, this is something that they need to explain. You ban IPOB, you ban um, IMN, 
You proscribe them and describe them as terrorists. You go to court and you get a court order under the Terrorism Act. Fair enough. Why is it you can't do the same with the herdsmen? And I feel passionately about this because I said it earlier and I'll say it again. We are here, we're going back to our respective families and so on and so forth. But blood has been spilled. A couple of weeks back, you had a Catholic priest butchered in the streets of Enugu by herdsmen. You had the daughter of the leader of Afeni Fere, and I'm a, I'm a Yoruba person, okay? His daughter butchered in the streets of Owa, in the southwestern region of this country, by herdsmen. You had a situation where just a few couple of weeks ago, a week or so ago, five people were, 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 were abducted. Luckily, they kidnapped, um, and they were, they, they, were, they, they were freed a couple of days later, luckily, um, all pastors from the Dean Church. Then, the one that pained me, just as the thousands of others have pained me, just a few days ago, a young pastor on his way to Abuja from Kaduna with his wife and his son brought out of the car. The pastor was shot in the face, Winners, Winners Chapel pastor, shot in the face, butchered before his wife. They took the wife away. The little boy ran away and they've demanded 50 million. Again, by herdsmen. No, this, but, but, no, 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 no. There's, there's an let, issue no, 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 with please, this. Let me finish. This is a very serious issue. Now, why is it that the government does not seek to go to court and ensure that Whoever these people are, these herdsmen, whatever you like to call them, are not branded as terrorists. They go around with AK-47 killing people every day in this country. But the government doesn't talk about it. The government makes no arrests. The government makes no prosecution. They are allowed to do anything they like. And that is the contradiction that many people are worried about. The question is why? Again, you look at Boko Haram. You look at the way the war is being prosecuted against terrorists. When, and you need to go back on this because you need to remember this, when Boko Haram was prescribed in 2013 by the Jonathan government, the people that are in power today, I'm talking about Lai Mohammed specifically, uh, who has just been returned as a minister, he came up and said it was unconstitutional and unacceptable that Boko Haram was, um, was prescribed. And Buhari himself, our revered president, has also, on various occasions, said things like an attack on Boko Haram is an attack on the North. He will no, I don't but, have, but, we but, don't have but, any... Sure. I just have to make yeah. it clear that we do not have mm. any facts to back up Well, what I will say this to you, and this is the said. problem. I'm sorry to say this, yeah. Osasu. This is the problem I have, which is why Nigerian media is partly to blame for this. This is an undisputed fact. It is on record. It was spoken by him in 2013. It has never been disputed by him. It has never been denied by him. We would love no, it no, if that you show it. us I can the show you. After this, I'll show this. you. Okay. If you had asked me to bring it, I would have brought it to you. Okay. Secondly, I'll also tell you something else which I, which I, can, also, <laughs> which I can also substantiate. Yeah. On, you know, and I've said on many, many occasions, we have a president who was nominated by Boko Haram in 2013 to be their spokesman during the, um, during the, um, uh, when they wanted to go into negotiations with the government. These are indisputable I have to also make this clear <laughs> because, again, journalism is about yeah. objectivity and you facts. Know what you so no. you would provide no, 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 no. us, you would you know provide us no, this no, no, information. No, no. Also, you know what you will do. <laughs> okay. You call whoever it is that represents the government to come and dispute that. I will send you the evidence. They have never denied it. I've said this thing over a hundred times. So so many other people have done. Can so. we expect no, it from you on your you social can, media you can, handle? You can get it. You can get it from me any day. Go okay, and read, so no, 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 you know what you do. Mm -hmm. Go and read all my essays. You'll see the references. Ask any media practitioner. You'll see. Now let, let's let's not get. No, bogged but let me just bring you back. Let's not get. Let's not get bogged down in that. Let's not get. No, no, I'm sorry. No, let's not get bogged down in that. Yeah. Let's not get distracted by that. The point I'm making is that you're, in my view, it is also a fact, by the way, that they freed more Boko Haram prisoners than any other. It is also a fact that a military commander recently said that you, as a Boko Haram person, that if you leave the army and you renounce violence, you may end up being president of this country. I want, I want These are us, facts. I want, see, I want to bring us back to our conversation. Now, you spoke about prescription. We've spoken about IPOB and IMN. Now, and the ones even, without arms are yes. prescribed. That's the point. The ones with arms are not yes. prescribed, however, and you're soft on those however, that are terrorists. However, um, from a legal angle also. These people have faces and demands. IPOB had their demands. Yes. Revolution Now, which is recent, has its demands. Mm -hmm. Boko Haram had its demands and they were claiming territories. Mm. Now, with the headsmen, this is purely and fully criminal. And I personally believe what's happening is wrong with the criminal activities. However, they haven't come out to say this is our demand. Well, they have, it's different when we are talking about protests and people being prescribed. Let me, let, I'm sorry, let me again educate you a little bit on that. They have made demands. They've said that they want land. And they've got the, president of, um, the spokesman of the president of this country, again, it can be substantiated, uh, is that he has turned around and said, well, it's better for you, that is Femi Adishan, or my good friend, good friend of mine, 
came out and said, well, you know, you have to make a choice. You either give your land up or you give them your, or, you know, or you let them take your life. That is on record. It's never been disputed. Now, let me put this to you. And this is a very serious issue. The most, the most um, the, according to the International Terror Index, the most violent and deadly terrorist organization in the world is Boko Haram. We have treated Boko Haram with kid gloves over the years in this country. And the president and the government that are in power today have freed them and assimilated some of them into the army. One. The fourth most deadly terrorist, 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 terrorist organization in the world today is what they call the Fulani militants. That's, how they, that's what they call them in the international community. Yeah. Okay? Recognized by everybody. Yet in Nigeria, the Nigerian government has refused, refused for some reason or reasons best known to themselves to label these people as terrorists and to protect us from them. Nobody, nobody has advocated or said Others should pick up arms to defend themselves against them. We don't want that. We don't want violence. We're simply saying our government should do something about the real terrorists and leave those that are not carrying arms or threatening violence alone. And that's my position. And that's a responsible and right position. You know why? Because thousands and thousands of people are being killed every day. And all of us, we're all guilty of it, act as if it's not happening and that is wrong. It's... I agree with your position to an extent. Where I have the issue with is where you disagree with me, that we must guard our rhetoric. I wrote an article, I'm worried about Nigeria, and here is why, and I sent it to you. And um, I think your response was like, we have a right to speak the way that we speak in Nigeria. And I have a fundamental problem with okay. that. I believe that as an individual in a position of power that you are, mm. you wield so much power with your words alone. Mm. You don't have to go on the streets to march and tell a thousand people, come and follow me, I'm going to march about this issue. All you have to do is tweet. So when you tweet messages that divide us instead of uniting us, you pose a threat to our nation, Nigeria. You pose a threat to our security. Um, so while protesting is our fundamental right, mm. while speaking out is our fundamental mm. right, where do we draw the line in our rhetoric? Right. Where do we, you know... The messaging. Yeah, basically. in our messaging. Let me answer that. And that's a good position to take. It's a good observation. But let me answer that. And I'll go back to what I said earlier. People, one, have the right to say what they choose to say unless it's to do with violence or insurrection and things like that or whatever. And if it leads to violence. No, no, no. Because no. in some please, cases, it please, may lead me, to violence. Let me make the point, all right? People have an inalienable right to express themselves the way they see fit. I'm not talking about incitement. I'm not talking about violence. I'm not talking about insurrection. But to say, I don't like, I don't want, and I protest, and I demonstrate, they have that right. Of inalienable under any kind of democracy or what lays claim to being democracy. That is number one. Now, going to expressions which you don't like. Let me put this to you, and I'll say it again. You say unity. This government, this, this government that we, are, that we have today, are the ones that are responsible for the lack of unity and the division that we have in this country. You are criticizing those of us that have said that we have had enough and we're not prepared to accept this anymore. And we want a change of government through a democratic process because we don't think these people have been fair to us. The unity of this country has been shattered. We don't like it. I don't want it. I want Nigeria to be united. I love this country. This country means everything to me for about four generations now. And it pains me that we are where we are today. But it's a reality to say that, oh, we're all united and that people shouldn't talk about division and that it leads to this. You are living in cuckoo land. It's gone beyond that. Let me tell you this, my dear um, young daughter, let me, because that's what you are to me. All right? Let me tell you this. Okay? People feel bad. This country is meant to be a federation. The situation we have today, and you won't like what I'm about to tell you, but I have to say it. If a man like President Obasanjo, who we all revert and say it, I will have to say it to you. Meanwhile, I've been saying it for the last four years. Nobody listened. We have a government that is engineered and orchestrated a Fulanization and Islamization policy, which has led to division. Now, listen, that is the cause of the divisive language that you are not happy about. That is why people feel bad. That is why people are saying enough is enough. That is what is threatening the very foundation of our unity. And I'm saying this, if you want peace, if you want unity, we all want that. What you have to do is reverse this policy. And what do you do? You don't have a situation, fact, I can prove this to you, I'll send you the list tomorrow if you like. Fact, that every single security agency in this country, without exception, except for the Navy, a military arm, is headed by a Northern Muslim. 
I have nothing against northern Muslims. I have many around me. Part of my family are Muslims. And, and I love northerners. I live in the north. But it's never happened before. And what signal and message are you sending? A situation whereby the, the executive is headed by a northern Muslim. The judiciary is headed by a northern one, the CJ. The, 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 um, the, the, the National Assembly, the Senate president is headed by a northern, the Senate president, a northern Muslim. It ordinarily shouldn't matter. Do you understand me? That, you know, it really shouldn't matter. But we are living in a multiracial, multicultural, multireligious country where you must factor these things in everything that you do. I worked in the villa for many, many years. And I know what governments before the one I served, of our social government, and the one that came after that, Jonathan and Yardo, the efforts they made to balance things. You go to the presidential villa today. Again, I can prove this to you, my dear daughter, Osasu. 90% of the people that are working there, 90, 90 percent, are Hausa speaking Northern Muslims. It is, it's a, it's see, I, see, look, you see, let me, let, me, let me tell you this, all right? Sometimes, we have to live with the ugly facts, all right? Sometimes we have to accept that. And then you now f consider that and now look at how people will react to that. Now, it wouldn't matter if it was left at that. But where you have a situation where on top of all that, you have Fulani herdsmen claiming land, killing people for their land, burning churches, burning pastors, and so on and so forth, and even killing people in the Northwest itself, which is unacceptable. And thank God we have dynamic governors like the governor of Zamfara State who is doing something about it now. You have this going on all over the country. And you have a particular ethnic group. I won't mention their name again. You're uncomfortable with it. Okay, I can see that. I'm no, no, it's your I'm opinion. not. <laughs> no, it's your opinion. I'm not uncomfortable. I just want us to state facts at all times. Day, and this is precisely, Osasu, you will not accuse me of not doing it. That is precisely what I'm doing now. And that's why they hardly ever respond to me, because I don't just talk lightly. And I've been saying this thing for years, and I knew it would happen before it happened. And I kept saying, so nobody, oh, now they go, oh, you were right. Now, what do we do about it? You yeah, don't, so because the solution is the important thing. You don't start locking up people like Sori, Sori for saying that he wants to do a demonstration, and he says he wants a revolution. Now, he is not serious. You and I, he was speaking metaphorically. There is absolutely no law that says a man should not say, I want to protest. What he really meant to say is he wants to protest. Now, look at the situation now. We have become so insensitive in this country that a young man who I don't particularly like, he has, I've been, I've been victim of his um, attacks on many occasions since 2005. Right now, as we speak, he is, in, he is in detention. He will be there for the next 45 days. They're likely to renew that to another 45 days after that. And then they'll probably charge him to treason. Do you know the impact and the effect that will have on him psychologically, his family, his loved ones and his dependents? Um, Dasuki has been there for over three years now. Nobody talks about him anymore. What about his family? What about his loved ones? El Zak Zaki, I hope he's been released now. I'm not sure if he has. He's been there for how many years? We tend to forget those that have suffered these things. I, maybe because I went through it. For three months a total, I was locked up. And I was in a Boko Haram cell for a considerable period of time in a special unit in Kujie prison built only for Boko Haram prisoners. Osasu, I can prove that. I will provide, provide the evidence for but you. But you do agree but that the sure is the, 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 um, the point, the phrasing point, of revolution the point is I'm problematic. Making, the point I don't see that it is problematic at all. And I'll tell you why. If somebody says, I want to... I, okay, if I sing to you, as I'd love to do this morning, I say, oh, <laughs> revolution now, revolution now. Am I, can you then say I'm, no, I'm but, coming but, to Jesus? But, but the reality you know, is that his <laughs> terms and some of the demands, if not met, yes. could pose for the pro crisis and no, problems. No, no. So, let me tell you so, what so you the do. issue of war let prices was you, one of the demands. Let me, let me tell you what which you is do. Unrealistic. Let me tell you what a sensible, we did it when we were in government. Many people spoke like that. Yeah. We responded verbally. We don't lock people up for saying, I will protest, I'm going on a revolution, and so on and so forth. And then you say you want to charge them as treason. It's like carrying a hammer to kill, you know, hit every nail with a hammer. You don't do that. I'm only calling for restraint. And I'm calling for sensible governance. Tolerate, uh, you know, tolerate the opposition. You don't hammer people into the ground. The real terrorists are wandering around killing people. So Wari has never carried arms. So Wari has never said he wants to kill anybody. So Wari, as far as I'm aware, so Wari has never said he wants insurrection. So Wari has never said that he wants to topple this government through military means. So Wari has simply said, people come out and demonstrate, I'm tired of it. And he was part of them before anyway. He was one of those that supported Buhari in 2015. He changed his mind. When this was done to Jonathan, all of them came out. Buhari came out, Tunubu came out, 
So where you came even up, were in when the party at the party. I was there for nine miserable months, and honestly <laughs> speaking, I left because I now knew what I was what, that I had gone to the wrong place, and I fought them ever since, and I will continue to fight them. So the issue is this: why, why the division, why the double standard? And that's what we're concerned about. We love this country. We want peace. We don't want anything that's outside the democratic process, and we want to be guided by the rule of law and by the constitution. Nobody's plotting to toppling this, to topple this government. It doesn't make sense. I would much rather. We wait till 2023, and the APC is voted out of power. And that's why it's important for us to keep on emphasizing the division and the, and the strife that they have caused, not by just their words, because they said many things that are unacceptable, but also by their actions. And I'll just end this part by saying this. Our vice president went to America, verifiable, I'll provide the evidence. And he told the vice president uh, of America that the problem of Fulani herdsmen was exaggerated. Meanwhile, people are being killed every day. And he came back and members of his own church were abducted. This is why I'm saying they have lost sight with reality. And they need to channel their power to resist those that are really terrorizing our people and terrorizing us and not use their power to butcher us. One more thing I'll say. We spoke about Ayman and Shia Muslims earlier. Nobody's talking about the fact that uh, El Zak Zaki's children have been killed by soldiers. Nobody talking about the fact that in 20, I believe it was two years ago, 2016, 300, according to the official report, I know, and I won't quote the number that I know because you will say, well, that's not... No, no, the, I, there are actually facts to prove sure, to back that one. Sure, Amnesty sure, International yeah, sure, sure, said sure, over sure. 300 people were Absolutely, killed. and I can assure you it was well over, but I won't tell you the figure because you might get upset, but it's well over that. Killed by soldiers in the streets of Zaria for blocking a road. This is abuse of power. Nobody... Nobody has been convicted for that. Nobody has even been challenged for it. And then finally, you have a situation where our brave policemen, and I have to say this, because it's not all policemen that are bad. There are many, many good ones. Went and arrested a kidnapper in, uh, in, um, Taraba. in Taraba the other day, a couple of days back. And what happened? As they, abduct, as they got the man, and they were going to bring him, and these are successful policemen. They've done it over and over again, mm -hmm. fighting crime, stopping kidnappers, something we've been praying for. And all of a sudden, you know, they are now butchered themselves by, by army officers. And now there's a sort of dispute going on between the police uh, uh, and the military as to who did what. The questions have to be asked. Why is it that we have a government that doesn't know that it is important to not only protect its citizens, but also protect its policemen who are doing the right thing? And police lives matter as well, just as the lives of every other person. I mourn those people, and I, and I, and I really feel bad for them and their families. Finally, they should also remember this. Our, our, our embassy in Congo DRC, I believe just yesterday. No, that was old. That, that, that news it's was an old from, okay, it's, it's, it's an old news, and that has been resolved. I was really disturbed yes, by no, that. No, that, that was, I think, 2018. It was a legal Fine, matter so which it was still under resolved. this government. The issue is this. It happened in 2018 under this government. So it's a legitimate criticism, no matter how it's, old it is. It was a legal issue the where issue, the, the, it no, was no, given no, see, to the Nigerian the government. The issue is this. Let me tell you, the old, you, may not be too, you may be too young to appreciate this, but let me make this point. The old Nigeria, when Nigeria was Nigeria, there is no African country, none, that would dare to do that. No We're matter. staying in the property which no, no, a court no, has said it's not for you. It is a di listen. But there's a the legality listen to it to also. Me, listen to me. If, it, if I'm right, in, yes. unless I'm wrong. Which is, if this, I'm, and this has been verified. There's if legality. I'm, if I'm right in saying that it is a diplomatic mission, yes. it is our embassy. If I'm right in saying that, yes. I have never in my entire life and I've been around for quite some time, okay? Never have I seen that you will use due process against an, interna you know, an embassy of a foreign government because that under international is regarded as a territory of that government. There are ways of managing these. So I will never justify that. And if I were the president of this country and that happened to any of my emb country's embassies anywhere in the world, it would be a matter that I would take up at the highest level. So it's not acceptable. And it happened under this government. This is a, and the reason they're doing it is because they've lost respect for us. Chief Femi Fani so, Kaede, in terms of drawing the public's attention yes. to the thousands of people that are killed on a daily basis, I agree with you on that. I agree that yes. um, we shouldn't wait for it to get to our backyard before we are drawing public attention to this yeah. issue. So I do agree and I applaud you for speaking as a statesman in drawing the public's attention to the constant insecurity issues that are going on in the nation. Mm. But I know if I plead with you to 
accept to guard your sentences, your statements moving forward in terms of the unity of the nation. We that we would be very forward of you to appeal to me to do that, and I won't take that from you or from anybody else. <laughs> Let me tell you something. As long as I see injustice, I, if I'm the only person in this country, I will speak against it. As long as I see the powerful overwhelming and terrorizing and killing the weak and inflicting injustice on them, I will speak about it. And I'm prepared to say that injustice cannot be tolerated in any sane society. And there are many, many people in this country that are being treated unjustly and injustice is being inflicted on them. So many. And the problem I'll go back to is that we have become insensitive to that. Most of our elites don't care until it touches them. I have to say this, just the other day, when the four or five pastors from Redeem were, were abducted, it is at that point that one of the most revered and one of the best men and most godly men in this country got up and said, you know, we've never had a government this bad. Now, it's not about even the government. It's about our state. We are living in a state of anomie. More Nigerians have been killed over the last four years. I'd even say longer than that, maybe the last 10 years, than at any other time in our history other than during the Civil War. And you expect me, or others expect me and others. Look, let me tell you, no responsible leader will sit quietly and watch what is happening to people and not speak out. Speaking out is important. We, we must will speak do so. out, but we must, we must no, no, speak no, out no. respectfully. No, we no, must no, no, speak no, no, out no, no, intelligently. See, see, see. We must speak out well, for the, the unity of, of the nation. We can't speak out in, 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 with a goal to divide the nation Listen even further. Me. We're treading through very sensitive times. Listen to me. And that is why I keep on reiterating to everyone who has ears. If we keep on speaking the way that we are right now in this country, we wouldn't have a country to call ours in five years from now. So, yes. Yes, we will dis oh, agree to oh. disagree in the way that we are speaking to Nigerians. However, I would make sure all my audience um, know this, all the people who look up to oh. me and watch this program. Please guard your rhetoric. We are treading through very sensitive times in Nigeria today. Yes, call out insecurity where you see it. Yes, call out the government when they do something wrong. Yes, protest. It's your fundamental human right to protest. But let us guard our words. Don't be swayed by politicians from the PDP oh, or the APC I, who want you to speak a certain I, way against I, your I, fellow I, human beings. That is wrong, and I will not right, tolerate that. But unfortunately, I'm, well, so I'm, so but, but, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Honorable Minister. It's 9.50 and we have to take the sports well, segment. But we will continue the conversation on social we, we media. Will Please. Um, we'll take a short break right now and we'll bring you five minutes of the sports segment of the weekend show. We're so sorry that it's going to take so so short of a time. But um, please don't go anywhere and we'll be right back. Thank you so much, Chief Fanny <laughs> Fagadi, <laughs> for coming in the Thank program. You for speaking <laughs> Thank you so much for investing your time with us today. Odiri, we're so sorry we ate into your yeah. segment. Just give us a brief rundown of what you're going to talk about in this sports segment. Uh, it was going to be uh, a preview or review of the deadline day transfers and uh, what happened. Liverpool, Norwich. Yeah, Liverpool, Norwich. What a beautiful first half. The, the Norwich City fans just decided, well, we've lost 4 nil first half. So they started singing, oh, we won the second half 1-0. Do you think that they deserve a place after that performance? No, they do deserve a place. They just decided that they wanted to attack themselves throughout the game. So they deserve a place to get there. Okay. Wow. So what we're going to do now is sign off. Audrey, thank you so much. Um, we're going to sign off now by Wayla. Thank you so much. Take it away. They scored two goals. The first goal, they scored themselves. <laughs> and then yeah, the second. Well, that, that was good. Yes. Over. I'm, looking, I'm a Chelsea fan. Chelsea fan. And hey, just get ready for maybe top ten this season. Breath go. Yes, so, yes, so.